everyone, Nilda here from My Love Doing All Things Crafty, and today I want to share with you something I just recently discovered. I've been scanning my images, or my stamps I should say, using a pick scan mat and then importing them to my Silhouette Studio and then cutting them um, using registration marks that come with the pick scan mat. But I'm a member of the Stamping Enablers group on Facebook, and I just re recently discovered that you can do the same process without the pick scan mat and it's a little bit easier I'm, I'm finding. So what you need to do is scan an image of a stamp set that you may have. What I'm going to show you is an image that I've scanned already. So we'll go to open and I'm going to show you this stamp, stamp set that I have have, and I haven't used yet so I thought this would be perfect for this. So when you scan your scanner should be set to eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So the first thing you wanna do is if your image saves smaller, is make sure that you enlarge this, that um, page, as you see it's a picture, to the same size. Make sure you are in the letter mode, so it's an eight and a half by 11. So you're gonna to wanna to go to your size scaling tool and change your portions to eight and a half by 11. Keep your lock aspect ratio the same and you will be the same size as your stamp essentially. So the next thing I did was I'm just going to move this off the um, workspace. I trimmed down my my image. So you take the knife tool, hold your shift key down to keep a straight line and then do the same thing across and again down. So this just gets rid of this, oops, this big piece that you were working with. Now you have a smaller piece to work with here. So drag that back onto your workspace. And I'm gonna zoom in, uh, not that much. Let's go back a little bit. Okay, so that's good. So the next thing you're gonna do is trace the whole area. So um, select trace area and you're going to trace and just play around with these. I, I honestly couldn't explain how this works. I just kind of fiddle until I get a nice outer edge to the image that I want to create a digital die of. And so that looks okay to me. Um, then I'm just going to trace the outer edge. And so if you move this over, you'll see the outer edge of the thing. Don't worry, it's a little messy, but you're gonna create an offset anyway. So you could just highlight. Um, so you wanna make sure you got the right ones highlighted. So create the offset of that. And I don't wanna go that large. I'm just gonna go to uh, point four. I usually do point four, point five of an inch and click apply. And there you go. You have, oops, so see how this one joined, joined together here? You don't want that, but you know what? It doesn't really matter because this image is the exact same size as this image, so we're good. So um, the next thing you're gonna do is move that over and clean up your image. So I'm gonna delete this piece. This, unless you're creating a mask, you can save these, um, these uh, outer edges of the exact sizing because if you wanted to um, do some ink blending or anything like that you could save that as well so I'm, I want these images because if you put them back in here that'll give you a nice offset around all these images and that was a 0.4 of an inch offset so the next thing I did was um, create or draw a square or place a square around those images. So the reason I do that is because I like to use a stamping tool and if you do this this will make your life so much easier because you will have now a negative space that's nicely cut around um, your digital dies. Okay so before I group them, I'm going to um, just highlight these guys 
Control C and Control V to create a copy. And then I'm going to move that over there. So now that I have a, oh, I didn't want the square, but that's okay. So now that I have my square around the images, I'm going to highlight all these images and group and create a compound path. Okay, so now I'm going to just color this. I'll just go, uh, let's do red because the lines are red. So now this will be my negative piece. When I cut my stamps out, this I will keep. These will get cut when, when I send to my silhouette to cut. And you'll have all these extra pieces so you can work with in the future. So what I just do is control C again. Actually, you know what? Let's group them first and then control C, control V, control C, control V, and there you go. So I'll just show you the, the one file that I already saved. So I, I saved them a little differently so I can get more um, images on one sheet of paper. Now that you've saved the file, you can go ahead and cut the um, digital dies and then store them in a Ziploc bag. Don't throw out this piece because this will be useful for um, positioning it in your stamping tool. And um, whenever you run out and want more, you can just always open up this file and cut more images. You just have to do this once. It takes a little bit of time, but once it's done, it's there forever and you can just mass produce all of these um, as many times as you want. Now you're ready to send them to cut. Um, make sure you adjust your cut settings depending on how thick your paper is. This um, tutorial could probably be done with the Cricut machine. I am not 100% sure that this could be done. I'm assuming that if you can scan it, resize the image to an 8.5 by 11, you could probably do the same thing in the Cricut software. I'm not sure because I do not have one but I don't see why it wouldn't be able to do something similar. If there's anybody out there that has a Cricut and would like to try it out, let me know if it works because um, I'm just curious to know if it works for them too. I hope this tutorial has helped you create your own digital dies. Hopefully you'll see me using one of these dies in a future card. Thanks for stopping by and watching. Happy crafting everyone.